We spent a great deal of time during our first class gathering covering some basic issues that we need to have um, a grasp of and a firmer grasp of as we move forward over the first few weeks of this course. We started tonight by thinking about um, some real basic concepts. First, Canada. What is Canada? What is that term and phrase mean to you. We had some really interesting ideas come up in class, but one of the things I wanted you to think about is that Canada, like America, um, doesn't have a single definition. And the way we talked about it in class was that countries um, can be you know, defined, or at least partially defined, as they exist during certain moments in time. So America today um, is very different in many ways than America at, in, in the mid-1990s in the you know, 1960s, in 1920, in 1830. So America is kind of defined against particular periods. The same is true of Canada. Um, and so we need to be kind of considering that standard as we go through the course. Now, what's difficult or perhaps challenging about that for us in terms of our class is that that kind of definition is most appropriately addressed in a history course. And this obviously isn't a history course. So what we're gonna be thinking about is how Canada is represented through its stories, myths, and, and legends, and traditions, um, through its literature. And that got us into our second major idea of the evening, uh, which was a very basic discussion on what literature is. And we had a number of really interesting ideas, again, that came up. We were able to kind of boil down our various descriptions under one common idea, and that is that literature um, is essentially something that speaks to the human experience and that has an impact on a culture, um, represents, represents that culture in some way. Literature is also something that um, can never be necessarily pinned down to one definite meaning. There are almost always numerous ways uh, to look at a piece of literature and to get various meanings out of it. Now, that again might not be an entirely satisfactory definition, particularly if you're someone who's a very concrete thinker, um, but we need to go with it for the moment. Um, I think it will serve us for at least the first couple of weeks of this course. Once we kind of tackled those two ideas, we spent an extended period of time thinking about the garrison mentality, um, a social theory developed by uh, a great critic named Northrop Frye. And what the garrison mentality says uh, very briefly, it's also described on this page, is something that we can use to understand early Canadian writing and also some of the novels, the more modern and contemporary novels, we'll be considering later in this course. Essentially what we have here is um, a, a, a conversation or a description of what life is like um, for early uh, soldiers uh, and merchants who came to live um, in Canada um, and while they, what happened to them while they were away from home for many of them, which was back in Europe. And what we found is that, or what Northrop Frye talks about, is how people live in garrisons or military communities, which are isolated, uh, both kind of physically um, and also within this environment, people are kind of isolated so, uh, psychologically. There's a very small community with which they interact. And he talks about what happens to people living under such conditions. And essentially, he says that people um, develop either the mentality of a fighter or a deserter. And the fighter is somebody who toes the line. Uh, with the rules of the garrison and is very supportive of the law of the garrison and very supportive of you know the society's uh, established standards and practices. Um, we may all know a lot of fighters um, in our individual daily lives. But you also have people who fall under a deserter category and the deserter category um, is made up of people who rebel against the established rules and expectations of the garrison. It might not be a it might not be a physical rebellion, but psychologically they're uneasy, or intellectually they're uneasy with the rules and regulations that they've been placed under, and so they kind of they act in ways, or they might start thinking in ways that are contrary to the to the to the basic rules of the garrison. And you have these two kinds of character types. Fry tells us, um, and we thought about how um, their interactions might give rise to all sorts of you know social issues and complexities. We spent a lot of time thinking about how towns, small rural towns in Maine in particular, might even today fall under um, uh, a description of the garrison mentality. And we spent a great deal of time thinking about how um, uh, the places in which many of us may have grown up um, may um, have all kinds of social standards that we, can under that we can understand under the framework of fighter um, and deserter. This conversation um, led us into a consideration of uh, our first two major writers for this semester, Francis 
Brooke and Susanna Moody, which will be described in a subsequent video. But I really wanted to just take a, the first, you know, half of our class uh, today to be thinking about the garrison mentality to understand that it involves um, a, a consideration of um, certain kinds of individuals, some of whom can be classified as fighters, some of whom can be classified as deserters. And that, I think, will be a good initial framework for us to address uh, Canadian literature generally.